Okay. Who wore it better, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> <laughs> we have officially run out of shirts. Wow. At the Your Auto Advocate headquarters. Yeah, we're waiting for the merch to come in. Yeah, we should order some. Yeah. 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 OTD. Give me the out the door price. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nice t shirt, though. Yeah. Lucky brand. Lucky brand. Lucky for you, I don't wear them anymore. Lucky for you, we're talking about how dealerships actually go through the credit app process. So, okay. provide a little bit of behind the curtain stuff for you today. So, we've talked about in some other videos um, dealer credit, not dealer credit scores, auto credit scores. And we have a guide back on the Your Auto Advocate website that I'll link to up in that little. You know, wherever, I think. wherever he links. Yeah, actually, point there again. Yeah. Links over right. there. Nope, they're off camera. All right. Links right there. Perfect. Yeah, right about there. there. Um, and so today we're going to talk about the different systems that dealers use and what happens behind the scenes and how they work with their lenders. Sound good? It, it, it does to me. All right, so take me back to when you were working at your most recent dealership, Dad. Um, uh, someone... What time is it now? It's 10 minutes to 3, so we'd be thinking about a late afternoon coffee from Duncan right about now. When you were working at the... Yeah, 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 okay. absolutely. Who's right. making the run? Okay, um, so I'm a customer, mm. and I'm going through the, the purchasing process, and yes. I just filled out the credit app on yes. the website. What happens next? We run your credit. Okay, to see what a you're... little more detail. <laughs> um, we... <laughs> We pull a credit bureau report. We pull all three bureaus usually. But how do you do it? What do you mean how do we do it? We, type we literally in just talked about this before okay. we hit record. <laughs> <laughs> and you were going to talk about some specific things that we so, discussed. So, so we take the information that you've put on the credit application and we put it into our DMS system. So DMS uh, stands for... Dealer management system. Yeah. So these are software programs that the, the or deal, deal management yeah, system that the dealerships use. There's two big ones. There's one called Route One, and the other one's called Dealer Track. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And and so we we type in your information that you put down on that credit application into this website. We used to use Dealer Track was yeah. the one we used the most. Um, and then. Once all that information's in there, we would get a credit report and we would find out what your credit scores are. And we would typically pull all three bureaus because some lending institutions uh, like to use Experian, others like to use the other uh, Equifax or TransUnion, yep. and and some, if if you if you have a higher score on the bureaus that they don't use, if you share that bureau with them, well then they will look at the customer based on a higher credit score than based on the lower credit score that they pulled up, gotcha. which could which could influence the, whatever tier level that yeah. customer might fall into. Um, and so once we know the, the credit scores and we know the parameters in which we were working, and what I mean by the parameters in which we were working, how much cash down there was from the customer or how much equity or in a lot of cases negative equity there was in the customer's trade, um, we would look at where we are in reference to MSRP is as far as the amount of money that we're looking to finance. So if you're someone that's super elite, yeah, banks will allow you to finance up to 140% of MSRP. Um, if you're just elite, it might be 130%. If yep. you're standard, it might be 120%. If you're, if you're, Prime or barely prime, it might be a hundred percent. Subprime, it's going to be lower than. Yep. It could be ninety percent. So, you need to look at your customer's credit score so that you could figure out which bank is the best bank to go to that will buy the deepest in comparison to MSRP. So it's not only from the dealer perspective looking for the options that provide the best rate, and we'll talk about this more in a second, yes. it's who's going to lend the most money because I might have a client or a customer that has a lot of negative equity and I need to get to 110%. Or 120 or, or 140. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And just one point to make is that you know when we talk about how the dealership is able to run uh, your credit across multiple financial institutions, yes. that's happening through these DMS systems. So for example, when you worked at, you know, the mini dealership, yeah, uh, the old mini dealership. It wasn't that your mini dealership had a relationship with Bank of America and and uh, TD Bank and Santander and Capital One. It was that the DMS through the DMS that dealer track, for example, has the direct relationship to all those financial institutions. Yeah, but 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 each dealer has a relationship with the buyers at those. No, institutions. no, of course, absolutely. Yeah. So that's 
that's the difference. The a DMS is, is is impersonal. No, no, no. Uh, in what the I'm, sense that I'm, you send in the information and a computer scores it and determines whether or not it's approved or or turned down. Well, that doesn't happen in the DMS. It happens. That happens with the lender. That happens and with then the, the lender. And the lender gives that back but, to the DMS, and the DMS gives that back to the dealership. Yes, yeah. and and then it's up to the dealership to contact their buyer at the at those banks yeah. to negotiate on behalf of the customer. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So where uh, Bank of America might say, okay, he's approved at a hundred percent of MSRP, and we might need a hundred and ten or a hundred and twelve percent. Yeah. And it, it's incumbent upon our finance manager to then go negotiate. With the buyer at Bank of America, could you do me a favor? Could you pull up app number? Da, 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 da. Yeah. We really listen. I I know you want to be at one hundred percent of MSRP. We really need this deal. Um, I know we were asking for one hundred and twenty percent. Could you do us a favor and give us one hundred and fifteen? We might only really need one hundred and ten. Yeah. Okay. But we're working at that point. We're working the bank on the customer's behalf in order to get the amount. That that customer needs, so that they can finance the car with the, with the amount of money they wanted to put down, or the lack of money that they wanted to put down. Definitely, and then different financial institutions specialize in different credit tiers. So, yes. for example, there are some like if you're out there and you're thinking to yourself, "Man, I know I don't have great credit. I don't know what my auto, you know, FICO score is, yeah. but I'm pretty sure it's not the greatest." To yeah. Contact a Santander. Contact a Capital One. Yeah, they're they're lenders. I mean, there's there's Chase Subprime. There's and, and then there's Chase Superprime. Like, yeah, so Chase yeah, is so, actually a great yeah. example. They're on both ends of the spectrum. Yes, but there are you know lenders that specialize in very specific areas. But the, yes. but the thing, the point I want to make is there are a lot of hands involved in auto finance. Like when you think about it, this is where a lot of the money is actually made um, in the car buying process. It's main finance, right? Because we've yeah. talked about in other episodes, dealerships will mark up. The interest rate on those loans. Yes, um, and they're allowed to. And, yes, they're and allowed they, to mark it, mark them up as much as I believe two and a half points. I think it's different in every state, isn't it? Uh, there might be a federal guideline. It, it, I don't know. The, the the guideline I believe is two and a half points. It was it was a guideline that was that was uh, ne negotiated with the feds uh, years ago by a, a dealer out of Philadelphia. Gotcha. Yeah. So dealerships make a lot of money there, and then also yes. these. Even these DMS systems end up making money out of that, and then of course the banks make money out of that as well. Yes, and you know, as a consumer, as a car buyer, you obviously have the opportunity to get financing on your own. But the dealerships kind of make it easier in the sense that they can shotgun out your application to yes. all these different banks. Yes, and then they can provide you with the best rate, or they can provide themselves with the biggest markup that still gets you a better rate than you can get on your own. And these are all things just to think about as yeah. you're going through the process. Yeah. And I'll share with you one thing that I learned from our commenters and then following up online, doing more research, and talking to some of my peers that actually happen to work um, in the lending space. Um, if it's within 30 days that you have multiple credit applications going out for an auto loan, the credit bureaus aggregate them and count them as one. So it, there no longer is the practice of, I went and had a credit app submitted at this dealership on this day, and then a week later I had my credit app submitted at this dealership on another day. Did that negatively impact my credit? No. If it's within a 30-day period of time, it's one. You yes. do one the yeah. next 30 days, yeah. then it's and, two. <laughs> and, and, if you, and if you're like some people that I've seen that had uh, um, less than stellar credit and they try every month, you know, and and suddenly in in ninety days there's forty five inquiries. Yes, that has a negative impact. Yeah, and you've got your three yeah. over those three months. Yeah, and it's but but the number good. of but the number of inquiries because they just some people just don't want to believe that they can't get the financing that they need, so they just keep trying. They keep going from dealer to dealer to dealer to dealer. Yeah, um, and they actually by doing that are exacerbating the situation. Yeah, not and, helping yeah, it and making it worse. Which leads me to one question for you, yes. Dad, which is: Are there ways to improve your credit during, let's say, a ninety-day period? You know, you're leading up to when you're going to need to finance. Like, are there specific yeah, activities? Pay, yeah, pay, pay, continue to pay your bills. Pay yeah. credit card balances down pay ahead if you can so that it gets reported to the credit bureau that way yeah you know the the, the lower your outstanding balance is the better your credit score is going to be yeah yeah it's not based on having high balances sure you know because they look at all those high balances and they go oh my god yeah yeah they're 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 stretched to the max yeah I know um, I've done some reading about how credit scores have 
like the big companies have modified the way that they approach credit scores mm -hmm. to try and be a bit more predictive and like yeah they have high amounts of outstanding uh, debt but they always pay it off and actually yeah. that means that they're really good so yeah. it's like yes it is yeah. convoluted a yes bit. Uh, but there can be people that they look at they, that they go my god they have tremendous amounts of debt they have always paid it off but god if anything were to happen yeah you know we're yeah. screwed they're screwed everyone's screwed. everybody's screwed <laughs> the amount of people they could take down it would be pretty extensive yeah so you so, know it's it, it, it's a fine line yep yep so one final question for you yes if you're going through the car buying process yes is there any reason you should be hesitant or you know uh, really bearish about filling out a credit app through the car dealer no, because, I, you know, I know people comment on our YouTube channel all the time, oh, just go to your old bank or go to your credit union. You should always just have the financing set up before you go. Yeah, but sometimes, there are times, there are a lot of times, that, that the car dealership can actually get you a better rate. And I've gone through the scenarios with with us a number of times and it could be because there's a special rate from the captive lender um, you know there's nothing more special than I don't know a rate of zero yeah, yeah. and you're not getting that at your bank or your credit union um, you know or it might be a rate of 0.9 percent or 1.9 percent um, but you know car dealerships feed a lot of loans to certain banks they have. They all have favorite banks. Finance managers have favorite buyers that they can always work with. Yeah. And and oftentimes because they're placing so much money in loans with a bank, they can negotiate a better rate for a customer than the customer can get on their own if they went to that bank themselves. I think it's important though to to make it clear because I appreciate where you're coming from, yeah. but. Your recommendation is not to solely rely on that. You, no. you should still get outside no, I'm financing not saying, options. Yeah, I'm just saying don't be afraid yeah. to allow a car deal. If, if, you, if, if you think there's a possibility they can get you a better rate, then don't be afraid to share your information with them so that they can see if they can get you a better rate. And if they can, then, I don't know, you've come out ahead of the game. If they can't, well, then you go with your lending institution. Or honestly, you know what yeah. you do? Yeah. You tell them, here's the other offer I have. Yeah, this, is, this is what I need you to, to beat. It's just like when we talk about negotiating a good car deal. You need to get two dealers working against one another. Yeah. You can do the same thing on a loan. Yeah, it's what is it? Lending tree. They get the they get the lenders to compete. That's what dealers do. They get. I can't tell you how many times a finance guy might say to one of his buyers, "Well, I got one point three five percent of B of A. I need you to do better than that." And they'll go, "Okay, I'll give you one and a quarter." Um, and let's put ourselves in the shoes of the finance manager right there. Why does the finance manager care about getting you know ten basis points lower? Because that's ten more basis, basis points, points of markup. Yeah. Yes. So it does make sense where you're coming from, yeah. and if, so long as as the buyer you have leverage there with another option, you're in yes. the best standing you can be. Yes. Yeah. So how do dealers? You know, what do they do when you fill out that credit app? They're putting it into their DMS. From the DMS, they get you know the bureaus, the scores pulled. From those, they go to the banks, to their they, buyers. They submit to the banks, and and then they start and everybody negotiates. So it's it's that simple. So if if you have interest in getting better interest then the interest should be, let's work with everybody we can to see to see the best we can get. I thought you were going to say, in everyone's best interest. It would be. In everybody's <sighs> best, best interest. interest. Yes. There you have it's it. probably in our best interest in <laughs> to this stop video. Stop now. Yeah. 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 I think we beat this one. Thanks, yeah. Dad. Thank you.